Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. And by God, we have an excellent podcast today. It's going to be controversial, I think, because we're going to look into the new Star Wars Acolyte. Yeah, we've uh, been talking about it up up the last couple of weeks, giving some speculation and whatnot, and and really not knowing what's going to happen, but having a good idea because we all know what Disney does with stuff. So before we get into that, though, guys, please remember, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, leave us a comment. It's free to subscribe, guys. Cost you nothing, so please do it. It helps us out a lot. Uh, big time. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. So, Acolyte, let me just say, I wanted from the get-go to not have a negative attitude going into this. There has been negative press after negative press. We've talked about it on our own show here um, with, with loads of stuff beyond this show, you know, just Disney properties in general that have just taken, uh, they've crapped the bed, for lack of a better word. Uh, and, and I just, you know, wanted to see, well, if I ignore, you know, or if I just look past what I know Disney's going to do, if I have an idea of what they're going to do, if I can just look past it, what kind of story is there? Can I enjoy it? What not? And having said all that, watching these first two episodes, I think I enjoyed it, but that's not I, to say that there's not stuff in there that, you know, you can pick apart. Right. I'm in agreement with you. Um, uh, honestly, I did not feel like this was a Disneyfied set as far as uh, what was going on. Looks like they paid a lot of attention to what was said on some of their other stuff. Uh, I noticed the sets looked a lot better. The uh, clothing uh, was a lot better. Um, then say like Obi-Wan, some of those other stuff. Yeah, I mean, they did look pretty good for the most part. I definitely like the, you know, the High Republic type uh, Jedi robes, which are appropriate. They were they did those correctly from what we know uh, about the High Republic. The only yeah. thing I really call as far as production wise goes was the textures on some of the ships. I just didn't think they came off very well at all. Yeah. Um, but I've had a lot of problems with modern CG just not looking like the TLC was put into it that needed to be put into it. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's stuff throughout that we could pick apart, but overall, if, I think if we compare it to what they've been putting out, it's pretty good, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it definitely. That's what most of us are thinking. <laughs> um, compared to some of the other stuff, not just Star Wars, but some just other Marvel stuff that's come out, this is definitely uh, much better overall. Marvel, Doctor Who, this. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, whatever, especially right? on the heels of Doctor Who, man, like this right. is definitely a step up. But we still are only two episodes in and, and we we hear rumors about episodes three and four being, a, you know, a major uh, 180 or 360, whatever you want to say. I guess 360. Yeah. Um, just yeah, an about face. Is a spin. A yeah. Well, it's doing an about right. face. Yep. Yeah. So yep. it's that's a 180. Yeah. 180. There you go. So, uh, I don't know. Those remain to be seen. But uh, the big question is, what does Joel think? We <laughs> haven't heard. But, well, uh, <laughs> let's, let me start with uh, the guy on the left with the sunglasses. That's Sean. The guy down at the bottom, that's Brian, and uh, I'm Joel. So, uh, that's right. Yeah, I didn't I, introduce I, anybody. It's, it, we just know right, kind of right in this time. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. You know, we need we need some variants in the force. Yeah. You know, I mean, this this, this episode is going to be some variants. <laughs> that, I think it's fantastic. You know, just wanted to let you know before I, I throw a little the, sprinkling of uh, ADHD yeah. in there, right? Yeah, why not? You know, I mean, that's, I think it's good. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll give you. This, you want me to go to the skibby, the skit? You know, start. Yeah, it? man. All right, uh, the acolyte. Episode one, uh, Lost, I, I kid you not, forward slash found. That's the name of this episode, Lost, forward slash found. And number two, Revenge, forward slash justice. Both of these released on Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. The rest of the episodes will be in single release, one episode at a time, weekly, every Tuesday. And the finale, number eight, will be on July 16th, all on Disney+. Plus. The, the episodes cost... 
an estimated 100 million, which we talked about last time. But the napkin math on that, and please don't forget this because it's important, is around $1 million per minute in the runtime of the show, which is to me is just incredible. Leslie Headland is directing the first two episodes. She has no credits prior to this in the director chair, according to IMDb. She previously was an executive producer. I have not personally seen any of her work on any of these films she was the executive producer for. Um, to me, the acolyte is a breakout director position for her. Uh, and she is the mini hat wear here on this show, as, as you can see in one of our previous episodes when we talk about it. I do have some corrections for the show from our pre-episode show. Uh, we obviously, obviously, obvious. We know more information now. We've seen oh, the yeah. first two episodes. There's no way I shouldn't put the corrections in. <laughs> uh, on a pre-note, the runtime is not 30 minutes or less. The runtime is variable. Uh, the first one was 41 minutes long. The second one was 37 minutes long. Remember Which that? Which I yeah. loved. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah, we and talked then, about that the other day because, like, I'm saying, you don't have to fill the time just because you have 45 minutes. Just write the story. Whatever, whatever comes out, boom, that's your story. And that's another thing about this is pretty much every scene made sense. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't overly done. You know, it was just, boom, right amount of time they needed, and they got out. That's one thing I appreciated. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um, with that estimation in mind, the combined napkin math over here in my brain and on, you know, the napkin, it's $78 million. Now you may say, well, it's got an intro and an outro. Well, the credits did cost money. Somebody had to make those credits and the intro they did had to cost money. It together. They paid I, for the yeah, same. I mean, those editors had to do it. So it did cost some money to do the intro and outro, but I don't know about a million dollars a minute. So let's just say the million estimation here, the million dollars a minute is per live action scene. Keep that in mind. I'm not going to count the intro and the outro, but it, it did cost money. I, I do realize that. Yeah. All right. That's it uh, for the uh, pre. Now here's the here's the, uh, here's the skibby, and I'm gonna do this one bit at a time. First bit, the High Republic. Um, the correction we've got, and this is weird. Jedi are often referred to as monkish peacekeepers in this year. This is found in the 2017 novels that uh, have the Disney Star Wars canon intro. This takes place approximately 100 years before Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, 1999. Yeah. However. Technically, this can still be wrong. As they have said, it takes place 100 years before the rise of the Empire. This could mean yeah. that it was 132 years prior to, to this Adam. instead of 100. They even refer to this date as Empire Day in the Clone Wars, in the lore, and in Star Wars Rebels, 2014, 2018 Star Wars Rebels. Much like uh, what you hear about in, fall, in the Fallout video that we did. Uh, with dates and times, the fandom and the geekdom, you know, upset about a date. Of course they are. Thank you, fellow geeks of the fandom. But that's uh, that's the first bit. I'm next to when you, you want to say anything about the time, you know, go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I think it's probably safe to say 100 years before the 132 uh, years before the Battle of Yavin. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up on the corrections. I mean, corrections, for God's sakes. Her name is. And I kid you not, I've, I've heard her say it now. Uh, Amanda oh, sure. La. Amanda oh, La. And I was so I was thinking the only way Star Wars people are going to remember this is Amadala. So it's Amanda La. Amanda La. Not yeah. Amanda La. Right. But Amanda La. And I was like, okay. All right. May is likely the uh, dark side character. I think we, we, we thought May was the other one, but yeah, you know, May is likely the dark side character here where OSHA, I kid you not, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, not that OSHA, but if it's the character, is the light side character as far as we know in the first two episodes. Well, see, I this maintain that they actually might be the opposite. Agreed. My next sentence is this, this could change by the end of the show, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. And if you're not paying attention... You, this is one of those blink and miss it moments. Uh, OSHA is not a she, her pronoun. She is a they, them. Have they said that yet? Uh, I didn't catch anything like that. Uh, that's good. But let's leave it at that. And, and that way I don't have to worry about it. You know, that, that's right. good. Yeah, because uh, it gets it gets much more complicated. Next up is the light whip, uh, in which I have a picture of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so our light whip at the bottom of the screen 
Uh, got a good, good still frame. And right here, you can see some of the arcs in the light whip. It does have a crack like to it when it's uh, it's similar to the original from 1977 that we yeah, spoke from about. The check, comic. Our, check our previous video for that. Yeah, from the comic. Yeah. Uh, I had to pause it to grab a shot of the detail. And you only get a few frames at, at best showing this. It's at the bottom shot of the trailer. But I'm sure we're going to get, you know, plenty more. That's right. it for the corrections from before. Now... Next up is uh, uh, the uh, production notes, but you know, okay. Um, I I call my production notes here the good, the bad, and the what the flashback was that. Uh, this is the the major spoilers ahead, folks. If you haven't seen the show and you are interested in seeing the show. I'm sorry, it's too late. Carrie Ann Moss, her death is in the noodle bar, which is a, a common Star Wars trope, the noodle bar. They're even selling, selling merchandise. In the first 10 minutes of the show, she dies. It was meant to be tragic, this is what they said. I think she was given that part to uh, actually invoke a feel from the viewer. We know she will be seen again as a flashback due to the trailers and the teasers, right. but we also might see her return as a force ghost. Sure. The yeah. wire work officially by the production cast is being called <laughs> Force Dash Foo. So they go by Force Foo on the set, on set production. One was similar to The Matrix. 2019 this was obviously a good fit for moss with a great deal of prior experience yes she has a matrix green saber of course when moss was asked and when headland was asked uh they both in the production response claim it had nothing to do with the matrix the matrix uh, is of course warner brothers and why would it disney admit about the saber so yeah you can't fool me though well, I, I mean, like, one point. thing that bothered me about it was, and I hate this in all movies that use it, the wire work where it's just crouching tiger, hidden dragon wire work, where they float in the air and they're kicking their little feet around. And it looks so ridiculous. I can't stand it. I've never liked it. And it looked horrible there. Why can't they use it appropriately and try and look like there's some physics involved? You know, like have Actually, them push I, I would say off. The opposite. Or, is you know we're we're here dealing with jedi you know it would make more sense to have that outlandish but stuff it still it, looks right? stupid even if i take that into consideration like you know this is a force user and it still looks ridiculous because we've played enough force user games to know they don't look like crouching tiger hidden dragon all over the place in our games it would look ridiculous there's physics involved in it so you're getting actual physics in a game and doing the moves that you're doing, so you know what it's supposed to look like. You're just not getting that here. I, you know, it was it was definitely an homage to to. I was gonna say many different was things. A, a a bit bit. Yeah, that, that's the first time we see those yellow star uh, lightsabers too. On uh, we're gonna see the live action. Here, I think in this bit, maybe, uh, maybe not. I, I did like that shot, did. that yeah. rotating shot. Okay. Ah, there's the whip. Okay, so the dude, like, to me, he kind of has the same outline, the same silhouette as uh, Ben Solo with all his gear on. Here? This guy? Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. when you see him up on the rock right before he does his saber, he ignites his saber after he says the little monologue. Right. Um, it has, yeah, it has a lot of the same feel to me. The helmet's very similar in shape especially the back part of it yeah yeah that, that really does look like it so i don't know if there's if that's uh deliberate there was a lot of stuff in the show you know calling back to it's interesting because it comes before all this stuff but it's making calls to stuff that comes later right. you know like uh ahsoka and uh and um osha very much are very similar in their the way they left the jedi you know they were both accused of doing something they didn't do and they both kind of just took off didn't want to be with the jedi no more um funny you should say that osha is my next bit here you mean to go ahead and yeah go with osha. it man yep. yeah um osha osha's character starts out as a mech neck a space mechanic that's m-e-k-n-e-k -E -E for the nemoidian i'm not going to spell that one those guys are from uh the early days of the uh, well 
for us early days, but for them, you know, brand new. They're not trade federation yet. They're just Nemoidians. So then you can't say Phantom Menace to this, although you may have seen there that this is prior to that. Right. And what's funny is they definitely got rid of the whole stereotypical Asian accent. Didn't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 yeah, they pulled the Asian accent out, yet they inserted the mechanic with a racial slur on uh I'm sorry. They, yeah, they gave the Nemoidians, they took the Asian away. They gave it racist connotations. And I'm right. like, okay, well, why would you do that? But it, uh, you'll, you'll see it in the dialogue right in the beginning. Uh, they, they call the mechanics grease grubbers, like grease right grubbers. off the bat. Throw, throw, yeah. them a, throw them a slur. So uh, those don't just, remember like those in Phantom Menace, you know, uh, if you remember all the droids, the R2 units was when we first meet R2. They get on the ship and they go and that's their thing. They they go on these ships and they fix the outer parts that are, you know, no human would go out and do. A mech neck is kind of like not something most people would do. Right. Well, it's, yeah, uh, but it's, it's outlawed duty, too, right? right? Most of your astromechs, they, they do that, but they also perform, you know, navigational. Yeah, they, they well. have all kinds of different duties, but they, yeah. I believe it's outlawed, like, or there's some kind of, they say so in the show. That, yeah, you know, they did say that. Yeah. The, the thing they don't tell you in the show, and, and I, I don't want to go too deep into this because I don't have a descriptor on it, but uh, I, I can, we can look it up later and you can show a map of the galaxy. The Yes, the normal galaxy, uh, they're still outlawed. They're outlawed back then, but in this portion of the galaxy they're in, this is like the... Uh, certain area they the rules don't apply this is the, the area the outer they, rim. They're in, yes they're like yeah. in a, a neutral zone romulan right. type of thing yeah. you know you, you, you need to understand that because they can break the rules there but yes it's illegal back then as well it's well, just like in mandalorian where the the uh, empire or well, in the in not even the empire but the republic didn't have the new republic didn't have reach out so far i mean they had you know very little presence out there trying to keep yeah keep that peace so that just shows you can't really enforce the laws out there Uh, of course you had a lot of jedi to do it back then too so i guess it would have been easier anyway i digress (laughs) all right um I, I've got a kind of a, an odd note. Remember the million dollars a minute? Her spacesuit seems like something from NASA surplus circa 1968. <laughs> this is a little weird for me. Um, and uh, I also, you know, uh, my suspension of disbelief can only go as far as I allow it. I lose. And this is in the very beginning of the show. And so they lose me. They, they lose me right here with their campfire in space which has no oxygen and i'm like well, what you know i don't know i just just lost me so from the science point of view really bad my suspension of disbelief goes out the window i, I have problems with the you know the reality of it here um but i i i, I don't say anything i just let it go by and then uh, we, when we finally get back inside I realized that her regular outfit, the frumpy dumpy outfit that uh, lesbians seem to love so much. You see this in, wow, Harley Quinn with Margot Robbie in that movie that came out, The Emancipation, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they, they made sure to make her look frumpy dumpy. This was the, uh, you guys got to understand that are watching this. This was a, a time when, you know, they were trying to represent uh, that that look. And and in Star Wars, you, we got this, which is... Uh, uh, I'm going to put it nicely as I can. Uh, her regular outfit seemed like it was a nod to Ryan Johnson's Rosie the Riveter, Rose Tico character. High, highly controversial. Uh, Headland praises Ryan in several of the behind-the-scenes interviews, saying how inspirational he was for her while writing The Acolyte. Um, next up, we, we the science and, and her, you know, OSHA, and spoilers still, uh, I'm going to butcher it too. So if it's they, them, that's why I brought it up. I, I know it's that way, but I'm screwing it up and I, you know, I, I can't do anything about it. It's the way I, I did it. Uh, the next thing you see her ship, you know, um, out of control, spinning into that planet. Uh, that is also science. Science. Yeah. I had a tough time with that uh, one. I, I was like, come on. Cause I mean, it doesn't have nose cone. It doesn't have shielding. It would have burned up. Yeah, it should have burned an up. Atmosphere. Yeah. She'd, she'd be dead. She strapped herself into a metal thing. Her neck would have been broken if yeah. she would have made it through the atmosphere. And she obviously got thrown free. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, okay, come on. So yeah. I'm, I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip this little section here. But that's the end right, of. I want you to pause OSHA. for go just ahead. a second. No, you okay. go ahead. That's that's OSHA. So go ahead. She did receive some Jedi training. So there, I I, I would say that you know maybe that played a part. 
Well, I was going to say, I guess, like, even if it wasn't her, like, some kind of Jedi, you know, the Force could have done something, I suppose. Right, yeah. It could go off there. I'll, I guess I'll give him a pass on that one. But no more! Yeah, I, <laughs> that's all. You, you, man, you say that now, and it's <laughs> gone, you'll be like, oh my god! I'm going to have to retcon y'all yeah, twice in this episode. Gonna, gonna, you have to pop it twice. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Next up is our droid of the show, which is usually pretty iconic. Uh, the droid. I got a picture of this. Yeah, this thing, man. It's there like, you go. This is our droid of the show. This is uh, our toy grab of the show. Right. Yeah. It's it, yeah. It's presented here uh, with some very Doctor Who or Whovian vibes. Think Sonic Screwdriver. The the droid's name is Pip. P I P. Yeah. We don't know. Think what that Fallout. Means. Yeah, Pip Boy. Yeah, Pip Boy. I, we don't know what this means. We don't know if there's a, a, a nod or whatever. It's listed on, uh, who is it, Star Wars? No, it's Databank. Databank at StarWars.com lists it as Pip, a handheld repair droid with a wide array of tool attachments, has a chipper, can-do personality. The pocket-sized droid is always eager to help, often suggesting just the right tool for the task at hand. Again, that's databankstarwars.com. Also, Pip is the size of a small toy, as Sean just pointed out. It is likely meant to hit the marketing team with something to sell. Think Baby Yoda size, you know, type of thing. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, Pip has been so far in the first two episodes presented as a forgettable character. If I didn't tell you his name was Pip, you probably didn't know until I said it. Or you, you would have had to have looked it looked it up. She barely says it. It's it's a blink in your miss moment. I thought it's, I thought unless she you're a droid had. I don't know. I, unless you're a geek, you know. And yeah. so that's why I mentioned it because the geeks. Well, I don't know. I mean, like I watched that's, it twice, but I picked up on it. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's because yeah, I mean, I that. always pay attention to the droids personally because yeah, I definitely you know, it's, like a, the it's a personal facet of the you know world that I'm into. Yeah. So next up is Master Soul, which we haven't get, not gotten to talk about too much. I love uh, him. Yeah, the production notes have, have come out, and I I can say for even from our our perspective over here, uh, you might get attached to Soul. Uh, he's played by Lee Jun, and I'll just say Jay, Jay. for now. Yeah, just I'll, say I'm Jay. Say That's it, how but, everybody else is. Yeah, they're yeah. saying it that way, <laughs> but uh, he went by JJ on the set with nice. the behind the scenes notes. So he, JJ. I think he, yeah, they 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 did that so that they didn't have, you know have to say Lee Jung J or Lee Jung A yeah. or however his pr is pronounced uh, that he prefers. So he went by JJ on the set. My name is Cedric, right? It's like Asian <laughs> names, man. They always you get something crazy. It's kind of crazy. Call me American John. Name. Yeah, call me, call me John. <laughs> John Smith. Uh, you may know him from Squid Game on Netflix back Love in 2021. Yep. He brings a serious tone to the scenes that seem to come off as genuine to me. Uh, Lee also spoke no English, zero English prior yep. to this role That's what in I the thought. Acolyte. He is a fellow Gen Xer born in 72. He is from Seoul, South Korea. At yep. this time, it is unknown whether his character makes it through to the end of the series. Uh, but there are some you know, flaws here and there. But that's basically Master Soul. Yeah, he's well, I great. Mean, I I just love his face. Yeah, the head list has two people left on it, right? <laughs> he's one of them. Yeah, so. no, definitely, he's one of the four that that uh, and what two are taken out right away. So right, yeah. So it's basically him and Kilnaka. So I imagine, you know, he'll be there at the end. Yeah, we know Kilnaka is only in two episodes. And he was already in one, so I guess he's going to meet his fate in this next episode, probably. Because she's there, ready for him. Yeah, yeah. So you know, some other notes uh, about that uh, possibility of who the uh, the Sith Lord is. Maybe because of what we know, Darth Plagueis, the Wise, would have mm -hmm. been around this time, and Darth another, Tenebris would have been the other one. Yeah, another Doctor Who reference in this show, the first one and the second episode. Wow, Doctor Who again. Uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, he goes by the master. So the master, the master. Is, is his credits. The master. Yeah. So very, very Doctor Who. Yeah, it is very much so. But uh, Pal Palpatine wasn't even born yet. You know, uh, we could potentially see Yoda and Plo Koon as well, right. which is pretty now, cool. I well, I, I know this is that's a nice thought to have, but and this was my like me telling you about John Favreau, Leslie, and 
Kathleen Kennedy. Of course, they could have lied. I mean, who knows? But they both came out, and I think Mr. Filoni, I'm just going to call him Mr. Filoni from now on, uh, Mr. Filoni also came out saying there will be no Yoda in this show, that Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy put a stop to that and wouldn't let Leslie have it. That's have wrong. revoked his dude name. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that sucks, man. I mean, that's, I think that's, damn. I don't even know what to say about that other than it sucks. Really sucks. It does suck. Yeah, agreed. What else? Ready for the next bit? Yeah. Yep. All right. So the last little bit here, a uh, little controversial. Uh, apologies in advance. And I cannot believe I'm going to read this. My YouTube feed for the past four or five days has given me wonderful things at this point. Uh, these are some references in the show that are meant to appeal to the, I kid you not, female gays, as well as the gay community. We get a short, uh, shirtless Yord Fandar. I kid you not oh, about God, that either. Yeah. That's his name. Uh, let me head up here. Oh, Your, what was his last see. name? Good old Yord, Yord Y-O-R-D Fandar. 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 F-A-N-D-A-R. Yord Fandar. This, uh, this picture was from uh, a YouTube video uh, from the Cider. Go ahead. He, he clearly does facial exercises. <sighs> yeah. Um, and uh, uh, he was interviewed about his shirtless scene. Uh, this is for, for me personally, this is the third time I have seen this from Disney. The first was, uh, and just so you can understand where we've gone in the world, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy prison scene had Star-Lord in the prison scene and nothing but his BVDs and then getting peppered with the red spray on the way into prison. Uh, they left that end of the movie. But, but uh, James Gunn back then had to edit out Gamora being topless and yet you can see Gamora being topless in the trailer on YouTube. It's been there ever since it's a legendary trailer. Let me like, there's, there's mm. Gamora. This is I the move. most, I this do. is one of the most paused sequences for Disney on YouTube. <laughs> right. Yeah. But the I, I hump. Kinda, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I don't think that uh, Yord is going to pick up as many uh, pauses as, as Gamora did. Uh, but we know this was 10 years ago. It's Disney Marvel. Uh, this is gun. This is, uh, you know, Tim gun. It was uh, a different time. Yeah. Yeah. 10 years ago was a totally different time. And he wanted to make sure to hit all the eyes he could um, more recently just to back this up, which way Disney is now going, uh, X Men '97. Lots. It's mired in controversy before it came out. Once it did come out, we learned that the actual writer who wrote it was fired, and he was fired under some controversy. X Men '97 is an amazing show. I've seen it from beginning to end. I, I don't think the boys here have seen it yet, uh, but it it gave us two more shots. Uh, it gave us Magneto and his uh, Speedo getting tortured on an x rack <laughs> Magneto and it gave and us, Speedo. Uh, yeah, crazy. And it gave us Morph doing some voyeurism for Wolverine there in the shower. And I'm like, really? You know, Is that okay. Wolverine's dick? Yeah, I don't want to know. I, I'm not saying. That'd yeah, your, your call. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, uh, we've gone from trying to have some kind of balance or Disney dialing the, you know, D Disney's been dialing the female, uh, you know, back, I guess, you know, in, in, in properties and putting the male forward uh, in, in a way for the female gays to enjoy and the gay community to enjoy. But uh, men have been getting removed from, you know, the viewability of anything to appeal to, to men. We're going to go ahead and start. They're trying to appear, appeal to a different kind of audience. But uh, yeah, that that's my bit on on this, and then I'm headed into uh, I'm headed into Easter eggs next, and and boy, the Ooh, Easter we eggs love get, Easter eggs! Yay, wild. Easter eggs! Oh, you're ready? You're ready. You're ready. Yeah, you're yeah. Eggs. I was like, okay. I need a thing on the screen. It's like Easter eggs, Easter eggs, Easter eggs right? <laughs> wow, excuse me. This is this is going to be bad too. Um, they are somewhat controversial. And uh, I put in here from a certain point of view, you know, because uh, yeah. this is this is this is the Easter eggs we're about to get. And, and it's not that I had to hit the Alex Sir, Sir Alec line there. Um, this uh, the first one, <laughs> the first appearance, although it be very brief of the live action version of the High Republic Jedi, the Vector Starfighter. Let me pull that what's up. What's your Vector, Victor? Yeah. Yeah. What's your Vector, Victor? This is our Vector. Oh, uh, Roger, Roger. 
Yeah, uh, this is a big deal. Blink and you will miss it. I, I believe it's on the screen. A total of like eight seconds. Originally, these ships in Star Wars came from Lucas having, uh, and that's George Lucas, having a passion in car culture, car collecting. Right. His, one of his early movies, of course, uh, you, you see a lot of this. Favreau it. gets this right and gives it to us in The Mandalorian. Uh, great care of the ship detail wasn't overlooked. Uh, Favreau even gives us a brief shot of the X-Wing coming in as Luke arrives. It's very, very much like that shot, except it's going the other direction. But uh, yeah. it is a brief shot. But but here's the difference between Luke arriving and and Yord Fandar and his Padawan arriving on that on that vector there. Uh, we know what the X-Wing is. It's well established, almost a character in Star Wars itself. You even get to see the X-Wing predecessor in the prequels, the Arc 170. So here's Here's the ARC-170 on top, and then here's the uh, X-Wing down below. Um, yeah, and I was well, saying that the uh, Z-95 Headhunter was originally the uh, predecessor to the X-Wing, and I guess yeah. they kind of wedged in the ARC-170 when they needed more toys for Kenner to make. Agreed. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, but uh, – and, and this may this may make Sean a little mad, and I'm sorry, Sean. Um, sorry, man. Uh, I'll try. Maybe I can put it a different way. But we we see this in other shows. Who? No, I can't. Uh, we have already spoken, uh, like Star Trek Discovery, throwing away the tech of it all, or how one of the great things the TV show Fallout cares about and actually delivers on us, you know, or to us, is the tech. And yeah. un unfortunately, the production notes. You're not going to like this. They. The reasoning is only a man would want to see this. Yeah, and feminism considers the tech talk mansplaining. Oh. And I was like, are you kidding me? So we're not going to get a description. And let me go back. We're not going to get a close-up of the vector. We're not going to get a close-up of Pip, I think, without and, and finding out what's going on. You'll see a trend uh, going on. We're not going to get an explanation of Pip. We're not going to get it. Uh, you know, where where Favreau takes us inside to see everything. George yeah. Lucas takes us uh, up to the X-Wing. You see Luke patting on it. You know, it's Ghost Day. Yeah. I was just going to say, so what you're telling me is that there's no female gearheads, according to Disney. No. According Which is bullshit. To, it, it's according to Disney, Kennedy, and Hedlund, which is really just lovely. This is what you get when just a few people that think they want they think they know how everybody else wants you know what they want to watch. Yeah, it's crazy. Agreed. Yeah, tired of it. Yeah, and we're gonna move. Uh, we're gonna move the last spot to. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we get a first appearance of the live action Zygerian, and I'm, I guess I hope I did that right. Her name is Tazi Loa, uh, and I got a picture of her right here. Uh, she is played by Tara or Thara. It's T H A R A, and her last name I can't really spell because it's in a different language. But I'm going to say Sha'an, so what? or Shun. It, it could be. This is Yord Fandar's uh, apprentice that we yeah. get early <laughs> in, the, in the show. Um, uh, we also uh, we also get Yord Fandar's line here. Blink and you'll miss it. Uh, your you joined in the, in and. This was with Tazi. This was, was with Yord and Osha in the room. It says uh, Yord has the line, you joined the Jedi Order when your mother's, plural, died. And if yeah. you don't, if you're not listening, you don't get it. Uh, uh, Yord is also yeah, played by witches. Charlie. Yeah. Or yeah. if you're a millennial and watch everything with subtitles like we do. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> then you yes. got it. Uh, well, we know that uh, – we think we know that May and uh, uh, Osha are daughters of the witches, uh, dark witches, actually, too, sounds right. like. And their mother's name is – I can't remember. It starts with an A. I got well, it here somewhere. Yet. We, we, we have it. We have – if you if you know yeah, the we don't know. from three, but we, we don't really know yet. But so we do know. Yeah, I know. And I can't find it. It's all right. Let me tell you, Yord Fandar, that's Charlie Barnett. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, what was I talking about, though? No, uh, yeah, Tazi. Jeez, Tazi Loa. Uh, it's a feline race. First seen in Star Wars, The Clone Wars. And uh, Hedlund is quoted uh, from Collider, uh, is the credit, uh, which was telling 
it's telling of the budget of the show is, is why I put it in here. A million dollars. She says, I quote, oh, I got a Zygarian in live action, which was one of my things. I was like, I've got to get a Zygarian. The poor makeup department. Let me tell you what I put them through. She's a blink and you'll miss her in the teaser, actually. So I got her in there as a Padawan, end quote. I brought this up to many folks who are asking, uh, you know, and a lot of people are. How are they spending a million dollars a minute? Where is this money going? And and I can tell you personally, uh, they have more than I've ever seen on the screen of never before seen aliens, which means the makeup department for each person to get, you know, in, in a chair for in this show. It's mostly it's mostly practical, as we suspected before, and some wire work, um, you know, it, which means they are paying many, many extra hours in the makeup department. A serious amount of hours are being logged in a given day. Uh, just for that, the usual application for even the smallest prosthetics, think, think Spock's ears. Sometimes that takes two hours. This kind of face, it's two to four hours minimum if they have everything prepped and that person's stuck in that chair. This is common and normal, but it takes usually two makeup artists minimum to put this on. And they had over, I mean, I don't know how many it was in that opening shot, but it was over 30 new aliens. Some of them were digital, but not very many. Uh, the, the practical is heavy. Uh, and we, we talked about this in our previous video, how the practical might have an imbalance. A lot of this money could be spent on on makeup effects and uh, I'm not making not effects, but makeup, you know, and, and practical uh, in the show. And you'll see it if you look type of thing. But um, that's it. That's it, guys. All I have is my opinion left and my rating for the show, um, which is, you know, I mean, I, I know it wasn't that bad. On what you were just talking about. Yeah, let me kind of let, me let you um, free. One thing that bugged me. Um, what was that that you were talking about all, all this uh makeup and whatnot with all that uh but it, i guess it's just too much busyness like there was ne never a shot with a doorway behind it where um it was clear right like every every time they did a shot with a doorway in the background at, at some point during that shot there would be people walking across um, and I don't know, I, that just bothered me. Uh, you know, they always have some kind of activity going on in the background. Um, and there was never like these moments where you have where, you know, traffic in busy cities or whatever breaks up. Right. Yeah. So I liked, um, uh, if y'all noticed, there was a couple scenes where she's fighting these Jedi that she's trying to kill. And she's going after their sabers. The reason she's trying to do that is she's she's trying. You can't find a red crystal to make a red lightsaber. You have to you have to do a bad deed. Uh, there's a certain way you got to kill another Jedi, like, and then you got to focus. They focus the energy or the the deed or whatever into making the crystal red. Um, bleeding yeah so that's what she's trying to do when she keeps trying to grab these lightsabers from from these dudes well but, she, is uh, doing and she that, left that I, one behind that i uh, think to another effect she's also counting coup I, yeah. I think that's a big part of like this initiation yeah that's scenario. what it seems like that whole I little the uh, deal she says before she they get into a fight it's like uh, it's annoying the way she says it i don't like it Right. She gets in that stance and then she says the exact same thing, you know, it's, I don't know. It just rubs me the wrong way, but I, I like, I mean, I knew it was two different people right off the bat. They had long hair on her on May and, you know, the uh, OSHA had the short hair. Plus she's got a tattoo. Y'all notice they gave her a tattoo. So there'll be a scene where we won't be able to tell them apart and that's how we'll tell them apart. So I, I, that one yeah, I would think was a bit annoying. I, th I think that will happen. Uh, her mother, uh, not well. I can Anasaya. Anasaya was her I had to look name. that up, yeah, but it's Annie. Yeah. You have to say, like, Annie. Annie you know, Say. Sun will come out. Sun will come out tomorrow. Annie Say. Yeah. Anasaya. Yeah. So, so, like, that is correct. We'll see her soon. Yeah. yeah. 
I did like those those droids that were in the prison ship, man, the transport ship, how they turned into right. the seats. That, that was, was right. really yeah, cool. That was cool. I like that a lot. That was some well thought out stuff. Um oh, this is supposedly gonna be setting up the true ending of the High Republic and the start of the fall of the Jedi Order. Um, um you know, Bernestra Rowe, yeah, she's from the comics. She's been around a little bit in the in the literature. She's a hundred and sixteen year old Jedi master. So uh she's she's kind of a one we one that's already known is what I was trying to say. Right. I love Jackie. Jackie Lawn is um I get she saw his Padawan, right? Or is she just kind of like a tag along Padawan or I, oh, was uh, she a Jedi? I can't he, remember. He did her. say he he didn't want this to be her first lesson. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, so. I'm not going to read you the paragraph that I absolutely removed for your benefit, but I'm going to tell you about it just because you said that. And I was like, oh, my God, please don't say it, Sean. Please don't say it. Well, no. Uh, see, I like I wow. like her because I think I don't like the, uh, she's at first. I didn't like her a bit. And then, like, I thought, you know what? Maybe I do like her what she's doing i'm not sure you're not gonna you're not gonna like what i have to say i'm not gonna read you the paragraph but i'll give you an idea uh she's a slightly better version of tilly for you yeah how's that, how's yeah. that? i kind of yeah. wondered if if when we do supposedly go to the uh the pronoun stuff if, if she was going to be one of the victims uh, of the pronoun i don't know it's either well, her or um well, OSHA, I guess. Yeah. Right. You, the trouble the trouble with oh, the trouble with Jackie's the same trouble you got with Tilly stepping in on uh, the captain's chair. I mean, you you'll notice there was a scene with with <laughs> with Jackie like and what do you think, Jackie? And then, you know, she's like, I, I want to do the reasonable thing. I want to do this. Uh, you know, go in there. Why don't yeah. we just send her in there? And you've got your Fandar, you know, right. the guy who can't stop whipping out his lightsaber through the whole show, which I right, have right. to point out. Uh, when we, get that, we get that first bit from Carrie and Moss, a Jedi only pulls it out, you know, for and, and yeah, she also he loves that whipping it out. From May. Uh, he loves whipping it out, right? Yeah. Right, but it's a there is there is a she, the there, the if you're watching the subtitles in the beginning, it's the force is a she when it's referred to in the beginning there you spot that if you want to that's that's an easter egg i removed because it, it leads to a lot of this the, uh, the white men are bad throughout this whole show just so you know the guy, all the guys that are represented that are white are are bad really bad i mean we start with that prison ship that the white guys there are bad, are bad. the uh, we, we've got a couple of side characters at uh, at the end it's a little spoiler here because you got the wookie and you got the the two Two white guys speaking Huttese in yeah. front of the, and it's Huttese because it, it says it in the subtitles. Yeah. It's in Huttese. Uh, and then you've got it, uh, you know, them being malicious, I guess, towards the towards the Wookiee. And then, you, you know, we're also represented poorly as in uh, we pull the weapon out first. All the time. Yord does it through the whole thing. I mean, Soul keeps it, you know, you don't see anybody have a drinking game on how many times you see a lightsaber come out and not get used. Th this show has has some serious force flaws, you know, but it, it happens a lot. You'll see them first tell you <laughs> that we don't we don't do this. You know, we don't we only are defensive and then they immediately go to every man that can have a lightsaber except soul whips it out you see every one of them whip it out even the guards at the when that guy you know the guy gets poisoned the even temple. the guard there you see his blue lightsaber come out yeah, hey, yeah. get away from the body and i'm like really you know when she's not armed you know jeez. Yeah, so yeah it's, it, little... it's, it's a little over the top well, you know, um, that's why I said when I went into it, I had to I had to have all these things, knowing these things were going to happen, what what they were doing. And when you know they're going to happen, you can actually watch it without it really bothering you as bad because right. you, you just expect it. So it doesn't you don't go, God, dog it. Why are they doing this again? You know, it's just like, well, so what, you know? Um, yeah, this like is I stuff we would have done back in the day or you know had had there not been this constant agenda we wouldn't give a shit right now 
So I knew at some point we would see a shirtless Jordan, and, and you know, oh, I just knew that was going to happen, and it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. One more thing before we get to our stars and ratings. Uh, the I knew right from the get go there were twins, like even before we knew May existed, uh, and. I had thought that it was Forrest Twins, and I was right. I don't know if it was the Acolyte logo with the, you know, the, the that's one, that's one O. That's not two. That's the the good and the bad. Right. And uh, headlines quoted behind the scenes. It's, in the production's notes. It's a call. Yin Yang. She, yeah. she went for Yin Yang. Yin and Yang. Exactly. Yeah. It's a Yin Yang thing, and it's a call to Luke and Leia too. Uh, they were right. they were the Forrest Twins, true, the first Forrest Twins we ever knew of. And uh, uh, the only ones we ever knew of up until now. So, just a little something for you to know. There's a lot of connection to to stuff they they've tried. It's interesting, like I said earlier, how you connect stuff when it's before all that happened. But there are little little Easter eggs here and there, if you if you know where you, what you're looking I, for. I do feel like this gave us more of what. Well, I want to see more of, uh, so far as Jedi choreography. Uh, I think a lot of the moves that we saw in the choreography now, now whatever you want to say about the wire work or the lightsabers, anything like that, that's different. But the moves that we see them make, um, just makes a lot more sense. Uh, I thought, yeah, I thought May's little I, fight thing was good where she, when she was attacking right before Carrie Ann got all that, uh, where she was just attacking all the, the people in the bar. I thought all that yeah. looked really great. Um, there was a lot of good stuff like that. That was the only wire work thing in there that I, that I just felt was egregious, man. When you're coming up the stairs like that, it just drives me crazy. You can at least look like you're pushing off. They're just flapping <laughs> through the air with their little feet. <laughs> you know, just push off that railing, man. Look like you're, you know, you're, you're doing something. It's just... Uh, aggravating but anyway i uh i have to say that yeah i'm gonna give it four stars without thought because uh God bless it was you. definitely it was definitely a breath of fresh air i'm still i'm still waiting to be baited and switched so we'll see what happens and i know that i'm probably giving it the best stars out of all three of us but we'll see <laughs> no actually i was going to agree with you simply because i would be hesitant to give it five stars or were things you know that oh no did bug me here and star. there but no. i you know it would be just be nitpicky it's not that good stuff. <laughs> right well it's just fine i was i would only say five just because it's been that long since andor right <laughs> yeah 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 it's definitely less than andor but better than uh Everything well, else. let me put it this way. It's their worst Star Wars show, but it's their yeah, best it, it, Disney show in a while. Statistically, it, it has bad numbers. It, it It's not as bad as Doctor Who. Yeah, and that's <laughs> what I'm comparing it to. Yeah. That's honestly what I'm comparing it to. It's a, it's a slight upgrade from Doctor yeah. Who so far. That's I mean, a train it, it, wreck. This could dive. This could dive by three, but uh, Doctor Who is pretty much unwatchable. Yeah, it, just, just so you it know. is. Yeah, it's crap. So what have you what are you giving this one? Man, I I been, I went through my little final bit uh, over and over and and uh, I, I'm gonna try to edit myself because I don't have a high opinion of the technical uh, behind this and I don't have a high opinion of the production value, but it, it's like the if you're an educated person in in the film industry, you should probably just avoid this altogether and 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 you know unless you're looking for something that says how. How not to make not fandom to entertainment? Yeah. This, 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 you should avoid this. Yeah. Um, as far as watchability from a, a normal person, it'll be fine as, as long as you don't read into it, and as long as you don't. Uh, these first two episodes. That's it. That's it. People are reading right. too much into it. Yeah, I mean, if you're reading into it, uh, or if you if you point out that. Uh, Every oh well, God forbid you have a YouTube feed which mine is full of Yord Fandar at this point and Magneto and I am know, Morph I'm 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 lovely I, you guys are just laughing on the inside I can tell I can tell both of you laughed on the inside my my YouTube feed for this week is is going to be something else um, but uh, hey. this show yeah it has a serious level okay. uh, there's a fiasco after fiasco after fiasco for every PR event uh, that's bad that's unprofessional. Um, 
um, much like uh, <laughs> much like Disney Doctor Who, this show is also on Disney Plus, which means it's targeted to six to twelve year olds. But you know, <laughs> they're looking. This show disrespects the, the storytelling which came before it. We we know this. We know the, that they've wiped wiping it clean. They've been doing it for ten years, and we've told you why. Uh, the loss of realism, you know, and the general theme of hetero white men and women are bad, both now, both now. Uh, it's got modern politics. Um, it's similar to the other shows. It, it, it won't be remembered well for its content, I suspect, right? You know, and yeah. and I, 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 I got to take a second and shout out to George Lucas at Cannes Film Festivals, which we talked about last episode, for separating his work prior to the release of this show. He knew what yep. was coming. If you don't think that man saw the show, and you, you're just wrong. But he, he shout out to him uh, for his uh, past work as well. You yes, know, this is a thank Disney. you for the originals. We appreciate it, George, and we, we appreciate the heads up. This, yeah, is, this is Disney, Disney Star Wars. Star Wars. Uh, and, and unfortunately, from a <laughs> tech standpoint, we've seen before Star Trek, you know, and from a science standpoint, um, fires in space, things that don't burn up. I, I, I think the viewer's IQ is actually getting lowered by, you know, yeah. watching this. I, I really do. If you let that just pass you by it's and insulting. skip, and you, it, it, it is insulting the viewer. Um, yeah. The blink and you'll miss it scenes, which I, I explained to you that the high points of those blink and miss it scenes, if you catch that, or the political dialogue, which you, you know, you got to pop the subtitles on to see it, but it's there. Uh, that's being it's being fed to you in in tiny small doses and just just for a few seconds just just for a few seconds uh so that you know it, i think it's meant for the common view if, you, if you're not into it and you're watching the common view it's just going to pass you by you're going to be looking at eye candy you're going to be seeing a like i said topless yord you know who knows but uh it, it come to me it comes off as disingenuous and at a minimum level uh, with, I kid you not, bordering on like a subliminal ma manipulation attempt at the yeah, viewer. And to sure. me, that is just beyond unprofessional. So forgive me, you know, guys at Disney. I, I, I My rating is, is, and I know I'm going to catch hell for this. If you're a normal person, go check it out. If you are a Star Wars fan, you may have some problems. You probably will. Uh, if you're a professional, you should really... Listen to me when I say this gets a zero out of five for me <laughs> for both episodes put together. For me, it's almost unwatchable. Uh, it's not as bad as Doctor Who, but, which is also Disney. Uh, please skip it if you can, unless yeah. you're looking to see what not to do. If you're a normal yeah. viewer, uh, you know, feel free to watch it. Try to enjoy it. You're going to have to have a lot of suspension of disbelief if you start spotting stuff. Uh, so it, it, it's it's hard to say for uh, but that's that's my I think that's guess. all that needs to be said about it. That's yeah. good enough. Yep. So cool. I mean, like that think that's uh, it'll just be interesting to see how this all unfolds. I'm I'm so ready to see episode three just because it's the infamous episode three now. You know, everybody's just oh, saying yeah. episode three, it takes a dark turn or, you know, the bait and switch. So we'll just have to wait and see. We won't have to wait long and you guys won't have to wait long either. We'll be back around again to be talking about it because this is a hot topic. And uh, yeah. So with that in mind, guys, be on the lookout for us. We'll see you soon. And uh, remember, as always, be excellent to each other. And Brian. Joel and I will see you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one, everybody. Yeah, I'm retconning you all again. Doo -doo.